Well, hello YouTube and welcome to another episode of uh, Zerks and Wheels and in the skinny groove. Well, today we're going to show how machinists are the ultimate in recyclers and um, well, what else would you call it? Um, repurposers. Um, I've got a, uh, I'm upgrading the bearings on the Tormac 2000 wet grinder from the plastic that they are to a bronze and in order to secure those bronze bushings in the machine I'm going to put in a circlip and um, one of the problems that I've been running into is that uh, circlip tools are kind of goofy as far as the expense goes and um, this is for an outside application anyway so I don't really need to go into Hoffman and order the inside job, you know, for doing the circlips on the inner bore. And so what I'm doing here is, uh, oh, a colleague of mine recommended that, uh, you know, for parting tool to use an old saw blade. And so uh, what I did is I took an old saw blade, cut it up into strips, and uh, let me show you here. I've been grinding on this on the surface grinder already, so uh, got this edge uh, straightened up, got both sides cleaned up so that it uh, so that it uh, has a nice uh, surface finish, and then of course the thickness on this. This is going to have to be one millimeter thick, and uh, now the final task is to get the top edge of this. Uh, nice parallel to the bottom and then we're going to mill a small little L-shaped piece of iron that will clamp this into the tool holder and um, I'll show you that later on when I get that you know get to that step but uh, anyway this is where we're at right now on this and uh, let me show you the setup that I've been using on this so far to get this edge because you can't really hold this unless you have a vise and I don't have a small vise for this machine. I mean I could use the one off the, the drill press over there but I don't have parallels skinny enough to get in there uh, between the, chi uh, the jaws of the vise and hold this securely to where it'd be nice and parallel. So what I did is I just used some parallels that I do have, the thicker ones, and uh, ganged them up around it and used them as a quote-unquote vise. So let me uh, swing you around here and let you check it out. Get some light on the subject. Okay, you can see that pretty good. <clears throat> okay, on the mag chuck here, I just laid down a couple of parallels and then uh, just stuck this in between here like that, squeezed it, made sure that the, the work was up against this, uh, this one that goes crossways because you, you don't want it sliding out of the out of the jaws there so to speak and this is just to keep it these two are just to keep it upright this one's to keep it from floating away and uh, the mag will keep that from popping up out of there so let me turn on the mag sorry about my head there now we'll back this out here so now we're ready to rock and roll and uh, been having to do here also because this is such a narrow uh, work piece and this is a wide uh, grinding disc is as it advances of course the material wears away underneath the disc so I've been having to advance the, the disc as it feeds past it <clears throat> you don't want to do that on the wide work piece but with this narrow stuff that's pretty much what you got to do and so now we're just taking off the the weasel snot to get this paralleled up. Final dimension isn't going to be critical. It's just going to be one of those things where um, 
has to have, has to have two parallel edges. The uh, opening on the tool holder is 25 millimeters. We're somewhere at uh, roughly 15, so we'll have plenty of material to work with as far as the hold down goes. Now we're starting to get into the carbide here, and uh, I've slowed down the rate of feed. That's that little carbide tip over here that we're getting into. <coughs> now the carbide is so much more harder than the saw blade material that <coughs> I've had to slow down the rate of feed uh, to keep the stone from getting shredded. Um, it just that stone just really disintegrates fast underneath that carbide. So this is going to be our last pass here as soon as it's done cleared. <coughs> that carbide. <laughs> and here we go. So now we have our tool. We even have a nice parallel grind on the on the tooth tip. Now it's just to get the one millimeter thickness that we're going to need for the, the tool itself. The rest of it can, can stay this way. Um, as a matter of fact it's better if it does stay wider and then that way you got a little bit more material to grab onto in the tool holder for the lathe. So I'm going to go grind this on the uh, bench grinder. Hopefully I don't lose my carbide tip here from overheating so bring you guys back when that's all done okay so here's our tool all finished ground very narrow one millimeter it's kind of hard to get these things to straighten up behave when you're trying to grind them by hand but uh, the thickness of this is two point uh, add it down here 2.7 millimeters, it was three, so I took off a little bit to clean it up. And the height of it is 14.5. So on the mill here, we now are grinding or milling a piece of steel here to lay this in later on, like so. Uh, it's one tenth narrower, one tenth of a millimeter narrower uh, than this is wide. So that way I get a little bit of a down pressure as this thing bolts into the tool holder. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the whole thing the way it is because it doesn't, you know, the, the length of it mocks nicks. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, getting it clamped in and, and being able to hold on to it. So once that's all done, we'll move on over to the lathe and chuck this thing up. Okay, so here is our uh, multi-fix tool holder. So now we're just going to insert this. We've got this all cleaned up and this is just a little bit proud of the, uh, the tool. So then we'll just insert it into our tool holder like so. Nah, come on out of there. And so now we can tighten up the all three bolts here if we wanted to. Only really need two. These are always a pain in the ass, these middle ones. I'm just gonna hand tighten these for now. But there we go. Now we can go cut our little skinny groove for circlips. Well, YouTube, from the looks of things, this is gonna work out pretty good. Um, I started going ahead and turning one. Um, my material is getting a little hot, so I'm wondering if I might not want to run coolant with it. I don't see what it would hurt. Um, by the chips here, we're getting a beautiful rainbow color. Now this stuff is machining absolutely fantastic. 
as you can see this is a bronze a tin bronze and um, it's machining just pff, never never done anything like it um, I'm using the same speeds as I normally would with aluminum and brass which uh, for this application right here is 180 rpms um, I already did one it got a little hot it's down there in the chip tray right now cooling off so I think I might just uh, flip on the old uh, coolant here and run through this real quick um, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera up on the bed of the lathe here so that you guys get a little bit better bird's eye view of what's going on down here. Okay, first step's gonna be point, I just parted the one piece off so I'm gonna go ahead and get this all squared up again. because when I get to making a step in there, I'm going to need that zero. Center drill it. And the chip coming off the center drill looks like a a horn off of a kudu or a unicorn. You got to go real slow with this bit because uh, I'm turning at such a low RPM, the tip of this bit might just snap off in the. Okay, so now I got it pre drilled. Now we're ready for our Morse taper drill. And I'll probably flip on the coolant for that. Flip on some coolant. This was getting a little hot last time. Yeah, now our see our chips are smoking here, or steaming, I should say. So there is quite a bit of heat being generated here in spite of the fact that this is a soft material. I wouldn't have thunk it, but given the speeds that I'm turning, you know, there's going to be a little bit of heat development there. I'm going to go ahead and punch all the way through this slug. I've got enough to make four bearings here for a the Tormex, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep a spare slug around in case I need to make another set. Or if somebody wants to bug me for them, I can sell them a set for them. Or do a little horse trading. I'm always open to a little horse trading once in a while. I think we're going to give him a little dab more here.
it through. So there's our hole. And when you know it, that looks absolutely flawless. So it does help to go ahead and run some coolant with this stuff. I've never worked with this kind of bronze before, so this is a first. And uh, for me anyway. And as I look in the bore of that, it's just... <laughs> it don't get no better, let's put it that way. Now to chamfer the hole a little bit. to put in our little step. Now we got zero already set on the dial here, on the travel dial. Now we just need to find out where we're at here. Our slug is 30 millimeters in diameter. So I'm just going to touch off here. And take it down to 22.5 millimeters incrementally. So there's one, two, and we'll run some cooling on this too. Yeah, if it doesn't squirt us all to, to death here. So I only need a seven millimeter depth of cut here, so I'm gonna go about six and a half. All right, there we are. Back it off, take two more millimeters. So that should put us at 26. And then we're gonna go ahead and take a measurement here. And look at those chips just coming off. They're nice, long, and stringy. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'll take a measurement. And we're at, according to the old Gesso meter, at 26.3. 26.3. So we got four more millimeters to go. So we are at 23.3. So we need 0.8 to take off. So there's five, one, two, three. So now I'm gonna go with the full depth of the seven millimeters. Because this tool is at a little bit of an angle, and this is a soft material, I can just go ahead and run it all the way in. Now to chamfer the edges here. tool that we just made. Now we gotta get in fairly close. We're gonna zero this out again. Since the tool is only four millimeter or a millimeter wide, we don't have to really monkey around too much with uh, that 
trying to find a zero, or I mean, uh, yeah, come on, put squirt in here. Just need to go in four millimeters. Okay, there's <clears throat> Just slight bit. Now to part it off. Okay, same as before. This parting tool is three millimeters, so we're just going to go in until we touch. Back it off. Now I'm going to reset zero here. <coughs> I'm going to give three millimeters on the travel dial. And so now I've got to go for 25 millimeters. I'm get awfully close to the chuck here. So we're right at 25 millimeters. So now we're going to go ahead and part it off. to go into that part, into that uh, groove. Then you get yourself lined up on the chuck so you can see and then you get splattered in the face by that coolant. You can hear the machine straining a little bit. I wouldn't think this stuff would be that tough. But. It's a little tougher than what I would have thought. There we go. YouTube, that's a wrap for running in the skinny groove. Um, got both my parts here. They're going to need a little dressing up. But one thing I'd like to show you here up close as a comparison. Now here's the first one. You can see the color is a little deeper red. And this was run without coolant. Now this one was run with coolant. Now notice in the bore that it's quite a bit smoother. Well, actually they look pretty close to the same. It's kind of hard to pick up here with the camera. I'm looking in the viewfinder and trying to get this all. But anyway, um, I left a little bit more length. I'm going to still drill a hole in here and put a little uh, oiler uh, to put an oiler in here so that uh, we can get oil into the into the bearing later on when it needs when these get put in. But uh, anyway, there's our. There's our uh, bushings, the new bushings for the Tormac, uh, the Tormac 2000 wet stone grinder. And um, if anybody out there was wanting or liking a set of this, uh, give me a holler. I'm always up for horse trading, uh, or you know I might just sell you a chunk of this, you know, or, or make you a set, whatever. But uh, anyway. Uh, leave your thoughts and comments and suggestions and critiques. I gotta have critiques. Um, it's always good to know what people are thinking and how a guy can possibly improve things for you guys out there. After all, you're the ones uh, suffering through the, the rigors of this video. So if there's anything that you guys want to see improved, by all means, leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm always open for suggestions. So hopefully uh, you guys got a little something out of that little episode for today, and we'll see you again soon.